What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, The Fourth Ken, and I'm back with another banger. Now, today we got a crazy transformation for y'all. Now, my client said he basically just wanted waves with a high taper. So, that's what I'm gonna do. So, basically, we're gonna be doing the orange peel method. That's what I like to call it. It's basically where you start cutting your client's hair from the crown. So, we made our opening with the no guard lever closed with just like freehanding. And now we're just gonna take our four guard just to play it safe. And the reason why I like this method, um, number one, it's satisfying. And number two, it's safe because you're starting from the crown. So when you start from the most difficult area, once you get it out the way, it's basically like you're peeling an orange. You just, it just comes right off. So my client, he wanted a three and a half, but I was like, let's just do a four just to be safe. Um, I used some wave foam later on in the video. I didn't really show it a lot, but just know that was like, not the key to getting the hair to lay down, but that definitely helped. Um, once I do cut his hair down, I do wash and condition it um, a couple times. That's important whenever you're cutting off a lot of hair because you know, hair can be dirty, even if he previously washed it, you know, when your hair's, you know, curly for that long, it can become dirty. Your scalp isn't exposed, so you know. But we're just cutting it all off. And the reason why you wanna go with a higher guard is because the hair isn't trained to lay down yet. So as you can see, it looks patchy right now because his hair was trained to grow upwards in like a curly pattern. So when someone has waves, their hair is growing with the grain. So it's growing with their hair pattern. It's growing forward, you know what I'm saying? And as you can see, this side, he had some patches. So I was kind of feathering it, trying to be careful. Um, but after this, we're gonna wash it and really get it to lay down. That's the key. You really wanna wash it and condition. Conditioning is the key. Because you can wash someone's hair, you're just drying it out for real for real, cleaning it. Conditioning it, you're adding that moisture back into the hair. So to start this high taper, we're gonna be doing a compressed high taper. So we're gonna be keeping the high taper low, if that makes sense. So we're starting that guideline right around, you know, where his vertical bars end. And the key to doing this is just not stretching your guidelines. So even if you go up too far on one guideline by accident, you, you just don't want to push it up. You want to keep your guidelines compressed, keep them neat, and just keep them small. Keep them as small as possible. Now we have our lever open. We barely go up. I wouldn't even say that was a half inch. We barely went up. And we're just getting rid of that line right under it with the lever halfway and then we close our lever. Now we have our one guard, our wall one guard. Doing the same, same exact thing. Following the same steps. Closing our lever right under that. Now we take our Andis number four guard, and I just prefer the four guard over the Babylon's four guard or the wall four guard. It's just better to me. Then we, and that barely didn't do anything. We're just debulking. Now I took my three guard with the lever open, and this is where we're really gonna start, you know, the debulk process. Um, I went with the grain. His hair is basically at a three and a half on top, but I just laid it down. And once you're done with the three guard, you're gonna take your two guard. And this is where you really start flicking out that line. You wanna flick out. You don't wanna go all the way up or else you'll have a burst fade and we do not want that. <laughs> I'm going with the grain also. I'm just trying to get that line out. His hair isn't difficult to fade. This wasn't a difficult haircut at all. 
Um, a lot of my other previous haircuts recently have been difficult, but this really wasn't difficult. As you can see, his hair blends like butter. Like it's very easy, especially once you wash it, it's clean. But now we have our one and a half guard with Andis. Not sure if you guys know that they have this, but there is a one and a half guard with Andis. And it's very effective, as you can see. Now this is my one guard with Andis. And since the teeth of the Andis Master Blades are longer, this allows it to be, you know, kind of like a long number one. It allows me to go up higher than I will with a wall number one guard. It gives me more, more room to work with, which is why I really like it. Now we switch to our short number one, which is the wall guard. And we're using our corners. Notice how I'm utilizing my corners of the guard and the blade, which makes it very effective. Now I have my half guard, not with Andis though, this is the wall half guard. So this cuts significantly shorter than the Andis zero guard, but nonetheless, it's very, it's still very effective. And after that, after you flick that faint bottom line out, you're just gonna wanna do some detail work with your lever open, no guard. And what you're doing right here is just getting that ball line out at the bottom that we set in the beginning. Even though it's pretty much already out, you're just refining the, the taper. And once again, we're gonna continue with our detail work with the wall number one guard. And this is just a good detail guard because it, it, when you extend the blade, and make the blade open, you can go up to that, that two area, not the three area, but you know, that two, that one and a half type area. And when you close it, you can also, you know, work through that zero area too. And as you can see, it's faded, blended. I'm gonna let you guys watch this part and I'll be back for the shape up. So right here is where we add some wave foam. I'm not sure what brand this is, but it was a new brand. I usually use this other brand. It's basically like a mousse for the hair, styling mousse just to lay the hair down. I don't use this on wavers. I use this on big transformation cuts like this. Like if I'm cutting off a lot of hair and I wash it and it's still, you know, sticking up in some areas, I'll lay the hair down with this. But we're starting on his back shape up. And just look at how crispy that is. I didn't even finish it yet, but it's just very crispy, natural. I, I don't add enhancements to the back. Um, I just don't see the point of that because the back of the haircut isn't usually the focus. Yes, people look at it, but that's not the main focus. So I don't, I just don't see the point of adding enhancements or pencil to like the back of the hairline, at least to me, it just doesn't make sense to me. But we're keeping it natural, but we're also, you know, making it crispy, crispy enough for the lineup to pop in the back. Because like I said, even though it isn't the main focus of the haircut, you still wanna make it crispy. Because when you make it crispy, you make that neck taper pop and it just brings the haircut completely together. Now to start on his front lineup, we're gonna take his front down with like a two closed. And as you can see, he has like a slight light spot it won't really be an issue for us because we're gonna enha enhance it. But when I did his lineup naturally at first, it's noticeable. So we're gonna add some hairspray to lock his hair in place. And then we're gonna comb that out.
and I didn't show it, but I always wipe the hairspray away with a towel or something. You never want to keep the hairspray residue because it, it can clog the pores right back up. So if you clean the skin like me before you, you know, add the hairspray, you're just gonna end up clogging it right back up if you don't wipe it off. So we're starting our his shape up. And as you can see, that's the light spot right there. We're not pushing it past that point. His hairline is tricky, I'm not gonna lie, it's tricky. Especially, not on this side, but especially on the other side. It's pretty tricky. But we're starting on his vertical bars. And we're making sure it's square, like, you know, there's, there's different shapes of hairlines. He has a natural, just straight across hairline. So you don't wanna round it like a rainbow shape. You want it to be straight across. Some clients, you do have to round it in like a rainbow shape, but this client is just straight across. So just notice how I'm detailing it. And I switch my blade too. Different, when I'm doing different parts of the head, I switch clippers. So right now I'm using my thin tooth blade. But then right here, I switch to my deep tooth blade when I do the vertical bars. I'm not sure why, it's just a preference. Sometimes each clipper has its strong suit and it's more effective. So right now we're gonna add some enhancements. And the main reason why I enhanced it is because my client likes enhancements and also he had that tiny light spot. But just notice how briefly I use it. I don't overdo it. Um, literally just a couple sprays and that's it. So after I use enhancements, I like to go back and reshape it up just to make sure everything's crispy. And now we're gonna be using our Easy Blade razor. Shout out to Easy Blade. Use my promo code, the fourth Ken for a 10% discount off your entire order. And I'm stretching the skin. Um, please excuse my chair rocking back and forth. I don't know what's wrong with it. I gotta repair it. It's acting up, but as you can see, I'm just stretching the skin. And I don't use shave gel personally, only when I'm doing like someone's beard, but in this case, I still didn't use it. Um, I like to dry shave, that's just the style in my city to get that ash line effect. The main key is to just stretch the skin. And once you're done, at the end of the haircut, usually I would say to freehand it, but this can be also just as effective, if not more effective. Using your shavers and really going over the hair, this will cause the hair to lay down. And then I also like to run it on the hairline just to clean up his forehead, any baby hairs that, you know, couldn't get with the razor but this is how my client came in today and this is how he's leaving the fourth ken studio make sure you guys like comment subscribe let me know if you enjoyed the video let me know what you think about the cut and this is crazy man crispy perfect length as you can see you got some waves in there popping and i snapped the picture follow me on the instagram and it's the fourth ken Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out. Peace.